Welcome everyone to another episode of A World of Chaos, WandaVision Extravaganza. We are going to talk about the WandaVision TV show uh, you can find on Disney+. Plus. I'm going to give you some of my initial thoughts on the eight episodes we've had up until now. I'm going to watch the episode nine season or series finale and then give you my reaction to that. Uh, first of all, uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button and make sure you leave a comment. Let me know some of your favorite moments from this season of WandaVision. What do you think of the show? Have you been entertained by it? Were you in the minority like me that actually liked the first two episodes that were in black and white? And where do you think the uh, season is going to go next season? Or where do you see these characters fitting in into the great old Marvel universe? as uh, Wanda has been confirmed to be in the next Doctor Strange film, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So we've had eight episodes so far. Episode nine will have been out by the time you see this video. Going back to starting at episode one, we're introduced to the TV show. And me personally, I love the, uh, the intro of this show where you actually got to see the Marvel logo turn black and white. It was actually pretty fulfilling to see the Marvel logo again, knowing that there's new content coming right after you see it. Uh, it's been over a year since we've had new Marvel content. Uh, WandaVision has dropped in 2021 uh, because of everything that has gone on with the pandemic. We have not had any new Marvel content for 2020. Uh, we were supposed to have uh, at least at the minimum Black Widow. That movie has since been pushed to this year. And as of the time of me recording this, we're still waiting to see what's going to happen with that release date. Will it be in theaters? Will it go straight to Disney Plus? So the last piece of new Marvel content we've had was Spider-Man Far From Home back in 2019, which left us on an amazing cliffhanger. So getting new Marvel content for me as a huge fan of Marvel it was a pretty good feeling to sit back, relax, and know I'm about to see something new. So you find in the first episode, we're not introduced to everything that's going on. We're really more along for the ride. It is in the style of a 1950s sitcom a la Dick Van Dyke. Uh, it actually has a lot of aesthetic choices that remind you of Dick Van Dyke. I'm a fan of that. As a uh, 90s kid, I grew up watching Nick at Night. So I got to see Dick Van Dyke's show, Bewitched, Mary Tyler Moore show, Gilligan's Island, all the old school sitcoms. So it was pretty cool to see that. So in the actual episode, it does actually have a plot. The title of episode one is Live Before a Studio, a film before a studio audience, which actually plays into the aesthetic. Taking you a little behind the curtain, they actually did film this episode in front of a live audience, which doesn't happen nowadays especially in the sitcom setting they usually use canned laughter so uh, they actually went all out they used uh, area appropriate technology as much as they could which includes lights sets even the special effects when they used them were actually for the most part used by guys off screen with wires and fish fishing lines which is uh, pretty cool it gave it that uh, kind of old school vibe you find Wanda and Vision moving to a new house as kind of newlyweds. It is interesting because the last time you've seen Vision, he died twice. Wanda kills him one of the times. The other time, Thanos kills him. So we have no explanation of why Vision is now alive, why him and Wanda are now in a 1950s black and white sitcom. We're just along for the ride. Um, it did have a lot of old school writing with a lot of the tropes of uh, especially 50s era sitcoms, which if that's not something you've ever been into, you're probably not gonna like it. Me, I actually laughed at a couple of the jokes because like I said, I'm just along for the ride. I knew that this was gonna pay off eventually, but in episode one, you do find that uh, Vision has a meeting with his boss it kind of plays into that old uh, sitcom trope of my boss is coming over for dinner. Let's have dinner and then hijinks ensue. 
we're introduced to the neighbor who is kind of the nosy neighbor archetype agnes played by the amazing katherine hahn um she's a great comedic character actress um i'm a fan of her work going all the way back to cross and jordan I was a big fan of that show. Um, she's had some great, uh, great bit roles in the Anchorman movies. Uh, she was in a lot of the movies that uh, Paul Rudd actually had. Uh, she was in a couple of those uh, when he was doing his indie comedy phase in the uh, mid aughts and early 2000s. Um, she's one of those actresses, if you don't know her name, when you see her, you probably remember her from something uh, she's been in that you liked. She plays the... Uh, nosy neighbor she gives wanda some advice that leads to her using her powers which are still ill-defined as of right now but as the series will go along you'll get really a lot more knowledge of what's going on um that episode does also have um probably a great easter egg that was pointed out in a lot of speculation videos that the actual dinner that vision and wanda have with his boss and his uh, the boss's wife they pour some wine the name on the wine roughly translates to house of m so if you're a fan from the comics that was a pretty neat easter egg moving on there are also in each episode small little commercials um they actually do have uh, technically a commercial break and it leads to a different series of commercials in each episode the first one we have was for a toaster and it was done in the night same 1950s aesthetic as you would see a 1950s uh, appliance ad but it was something a little sinister the toaster is um, called uh it's from stark industries which if you know wanda's history with tony stark starting um age ultron leads uh, to a lot to be inferred and there was a ominous beeping and it kind of like zoomed in on the actual part of the toaster that was blinking i had some theories that actually did go on to be paid off but here or there uh the second episode which actually uh disney did release both episodes at the same time so the first premiere episode was two episodes back to back primarily because these were the ones that were filmed in black and white and they didn't want to alienate too much of the fan base by making them think the entire series was in black and white i think you could have stretched it out but uh, they did air the second episode directly after that. Uh, that episode is called Don't Touch That Dial. Also playing on sitcoms, which is something they used to say back in the day on television shows, especially before a commercial break, because you actually, for younger viewers, uh, you actually had to turn a dial way, way back in the evening, way before I was born. Um, before they had remotes, you would touch the television and turn an actual dial that would turn the television. So... But uh, thought out there for some of the younger people viewing uh, this episode. Um, that episode is in the 1960s aesthetic. Each episode is going into a different decade. So we started in the 1950s in episode one. We're in episode two now. We're in the 1960s. And since this episode takes place in the 1960s and Wanda in the comics, at least, is called the Scarlet Witch, it takes on a bewitched type theme. The intro card and sequence is completely out of Bewitched. Uh, it has an animation style. It shows Wanda and Vision flying around. Um, it's actually really cute, especially if you are a fan of Bewitched, because it takes you right into that mindset with, with thinking that Wanda is named Scarlet Witch. It actually does play very well. And in my opinion, they could have actually strung that type of uh episodic te television show. They could have strung that to at least two episodes, and I think it would have played them very well. Uh, in that episode, Wanda actually tries to join the, uh, she has the neighborhood talent show. Um, she and Vision uh, volunteer, and they actually have a bunch of hijinks that ensue with Vision actually not wanting Wanda to show her powers, Wanda wanting to start to uh, use her powers. Um, we're also introduced to a character who we don't really know anything about, but this seems to know a little more than what they lead on. Her name is Geraldine. We've already known from pre-show uh, information, this is actually the character Monica Rambeau uh, from the comic books. You'll actually recognize the character if you've seen the uh, Captain Marvel film. This is actually Monica, the little girl, 
who is Maria, Captain Marvel's best friend's daughter. The one that even tells Captain Marvel to choose the suit colors that she chooses in the film. This is that character grown up. Captain Marvel takes place in 1995. So this character is around her mid thirties by the time we're in present day, 2023, mind you. Um, in that episode, it's actually one of the funniest moments that's happened in the entire sitcom. Uh, Vision, it's offered a piece of big red gum and ingest it because he is still a complete synthesoid he does not have a dietary tract the gum gets stuck in his machine parts but instead of him breaking down it basically adds to him acting like he's drunk so he's wobbling he's talking slurred it's actually pretty funny paul bettany does a great job uh actually acting drunk um so you add vision possibly acting like vision acting like he's drunk then you add in Wanda wanting to kind of use her powers in the talent show. You can kind of guess where it goes if you've seen a sitcom. One of the interesting parts also, um, Wanda's at a neighborhood uh, party meeting and she gets kind of contentious with the leader of the neighborhood block association named Dottie. Uh, Dottie accidentally cuts her hand, but the blood is extremely red in color which kind of throws everybody off. The biggest part of this episode is at the end of the episode, Wanda and Vision go outside of their home and you see a guy come up from the street out of the uh, manhole cover in a B costume and Wanda says no and everything reverses. So now we've known that Wanda knows what's going on in this world. She's not just the participant, she's controlling it. Skipping on to episode three, it's called Now in Color. Uh, this episode takes on a 1970s aesthetic, uh, very, very heavily influenced by the Partridge family, uh, Mary Tyler Moore show, and the Brady Bunch. The actual house that Wanda and Vision live in looks extremely similar to the Brady Bunch's house. This episode also lets us have a lot more backstory on everything that's going on uh we do find out that the place where wanda and vision are right now is called westview and that it's actually a part of a real community in new jersey you do find out that uh geraldine actually uh is not so affected as everybody else is in this world you find out that she's actually an outsider from what other people are saying uh, part of the episode does involve Wanda becoming pregnant, which happened at the end of the last episode. Uh, so Wanda is now pregnant by Vision. Just roll with it. <laughs> um, in this episode, she gives birth to Tommy and Billy, uh, her twins, who are the same names as they have in the actual comic books. Um, in the previous episode, the actual commercial had to do with Strucker watches and it has a Hydra symbol on it. So as of last episode, we do know that there is something going on with these commercials. The commercial for this one has to do with Hydra body soap. So Strucker from Age of Ultron, the person that was responsible for possibly Wanda getting her powers. And then you have Hydra, the agency that he worked for that led to her getting captured and volunteering and her getting her powers. So you're starting to see a through line with these commercials. They're not just gags, they're not just skits. They actually are applying to some, uh, implying that there is something under the surface, especially with Wanda. Um, the funny part about this episode is it's added as a sitcom but at the end of the episode you do find out that sword the strategic weapon observation and response division is actually a part of this which leads us into episode four so in episode four i will say is one of the best pieces of entertainment the mcu has produced um they are still kind of lightweight in the television realm as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. technically isn't part of the Marvel Universe even though it is part of the Marvel Universe it's now we'll acknowledge because the Disney Plus TV shows tie directly into the movies and lead into them 
um, I do consider it a little different. So as far as that con- is concerned, television wise is one of the best sequences they've ever produced for television and one of the most emotional they've uh, produced since their uh, inception with uh, Iron Man in 2008. The beginning of the episode in episode four actually shows Geraldine, who we now know is Captain Monica Rambeau, coming back after the snap. Um, it actually starts with her reassembling from the snap. She's in the exact same place she was when she was snapped, which is the hospital. We come to find out her mother, Maria Rambo, who we last saw in Captain Marvel, was in treatment for cancer. Well, if you know what happened between Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, there is a five year gap. So she's back in the same place she was, but five years have passed. She runs around the hospital completely uh, uh, nervous. You see other people that are just getting blipped back themselves, um, wondering what's going on. You see people that have been there the entire five years wondering who these new people are. Um, It's a very hectic scene, very well shot, very well acted by Tiana Paris, who plays uh, Monica. And then you come to find out her mother, Maria, passed away three years previously. So her mother died thinking that her daughter was dead since there's a five year gap. So it is absolutely heart wrenching and is one of the best pieces of entertainment Marvel has produced in a long time, in my opinion. But that part is just uh, the just the part of the uh, beginning part of the episode. You actually do get to see that Monica is actually inside of the hex which is what they're calling the the status of the town because there's a giant uh there's a giant energy field going around it which is shaped like a hexagon in this episode we find that monica is a part of sword her mother maria was actually uh actual founding member of sword sword is basically the outer space version of shield that was created to find out about uh threats that are from other worlds so you find out that she was uh actually up for a promotion a guy that she knew um that was underling of hers is now her boss because he got the promotion in the five years she was gone named uh tyler haywood um you actually see her getting back into the field she goes to investigate an anomaly in new jersey and we run into jimmy woo Jimmy Wu is the character played by Randall Park that you've last seen in Ant-Man and the Wasp. He was the FBI agent that was uh, trying to put Scott back in jail. He's there because he actually has a missing persons case, being that he works for the FBI. And then we go to find out there's something going on in Westview. Once S.W.O.R.D. is on the scene, we actually bring in Dr. Darcy Lewis last seen in Thor the Dark World played by Kat Dennings um, Natalie Portman's technically sidekick character well she's a doctor in theoretical studies so she's um, called to give her expertise through her we find out that the radiation coming off of the hex as she coins it is giving off cosmic radiation uh, reminiscent of the radiation that was created during the Big Bang the Infinity Stones were also created during the Big Bang, so it'll let you know that it is connected possibly to that. My, um, Wanda is a Infinity Gem enhanced person. So we actually find out that the TV show that we've been watching so far through now for uh, four episodes, they're actually able to view through the radiation. They get a television and find out it's putting out static. They get an old school television and tune it to the static channel and they're able to actually watch the TV show just like we're watching it. Um, The actual uh, uh, end of the episode, it lets us see that uh, Wanda and Geraldine know something's uh, not know something's amiss Um, that the episode ends with Monica being Geraldine in the actual world when after she helped uh, Wanda give birth to Billy and Tommy she then uh, says something to her about her brother and Monica actually asks oh yeah you mean Pietro wasn't he killed by Ultron 
Well, if this is the 1970s, you're not going to know that. So Wanda breaks character and then throws Monica out of the hex with her powers. It is an incredibly a credible tone shift because the aspect ratio actually changes mid scene it goes from a 1970s aesthetic to a widescreen so you know something's different and monica gets thrown out of the hex and you find out that she now says monica uh wanda is the key so next you find in episode five that uh we're now into the 1980s it does have a very family ties uh, type aesthetic with the clothing that Wanda and Vision have with the intro cards. It actually has a long um, kind of corny, cheesy 80s uh, theme song. I'm actually a little uh, sad that they didn't play into the fact that Elizabeth Olsen, Wanda, is the little sister of Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen from Full House. Uh, they made no jokes, made no references. I think that was a pretty missed opportunity. I mean, yes, you want to be in your own life, but it's your sisters and you're doing a TV show from the 80s. So come on. Um, but episode five, you find that uh, Tommy and Billy actually are, <laughs> they're, they're, they're twins and they're the uh, only twins, uh, the only children you've seen in Westview so far so it leads you to believe that there are no other children around because as of right now you've seen no other children you've heard rumors of children in episode two the talent show they did they kept saying it was for the children but there were actually no children present so episode five is also called on a very special episode which if you're a fan of 80s television you know whenever you heard that it was always going to be some heavy subject matter uh usually led to a conversation with your parents right after it um there's usually always a part within the last five minutes where the music got really somber and uh, somebody usually got down on one knee to talk to somebody um one of the uh, big parts of this episode is you find out that tommy and billy do have superpowers themselves they go from being babies to being kids to then aging themselves up to 10 years old. So this lets you know that the boys do have powers and they know that they're in a television show also. So it is interesting to see that the boys get it, but Vision himself has not been able to really realize what's going on. He's slowly starting to think things are not what they seem um, from what he has said in previous episodes he has no memory of anything before him and Wanda arrived in Westview which is interesting because he wouldn't he should know what happened before then because he knew Wanda so it's slowly getting developed that Wanda is possibly controlling this place and some people are getting it and some people are actually sensing that things are different. Vision is one of them. The commercial during this actual episode is for Lagos uh, paper towels. It kind of reminds you of an uh, old school brawny ad where you see a mom who's overran by stuff, doesn't know what she's doing, the kids knock. Uh, now she doesn't know what she's doing, but you know she doesn't know what's going on. And then the kids knock something over on the counter, and then they show the split screen of one paper towel getting stuff up, and the other one not, not getting everything up. The Lagos uh, paper towel gets uh, doesn't even clean up the entire mess. Neither paper towel does. And if you remember from Captain America: Civil War, Lagos is where Wanda accidentally killed people using her powers. Infer that as you will it basically says that Wanda isn't able to clean up her own messes. Uh, that's a lot of videos on YouTube that break down that episode. Uh, this episode was the episode that kind of broke the internet. At the end of this episode, you get a knock on the door. Wanda walks over and opens it. It is Pietro, her brother, who died in Age of Ultron. Only it's not Aaron Taylor Johnson. It's the actor that played him in the X-Men film series, Evan Peters. If you didn't know, Marvel and Fox, when they owned the X-Men series before Disney bought Fox, 
there were two different versions of the same character in two different film series. You had the Evan, uh, Evan T- Aaron Taylor Johnson version in Age of Ultron, and then you had the Evan Peters version in uh, first seen in X Men: Days of Future Past, then X Men: Apocalypse, and then finally in X Men: Dark Phoenix. They're the same character of Pietro Maximoff, but they're played by two different actors in two different continuities. So the fact that we're getting this actual actor reprising his role from a different film series, the internet kind of went nuts. If you're watching this or listening to this, you probably have already heard about it, but uh, it was basically everybody assumed that this is confirming that the Fox mutants are now going to be part of the MCU. Uh, I got to admit that was my favorite part. The next episode is episode six. And in episode six, um, it starts off in a 1990s, uh, early 2000s aesthetic. It is very extremely, in fact, shot by shot of Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, I actually think they could have chosen a couple of different 90s sitcoms. I really didn't think of Malcolm in the Middle as that like iconic. Um, I was a huge fan of Malcolm Middle, and I don't think a lot of people talk about it that much, only basically talking about how uh, Brian Cranston used to be the funny dad in Malcolm in the Middle before he became Walter White. Um, the, this episode is the Halloween episode. As all TV shows usually do, there is a Halloween-themed episode. Uh, so in this episode, you do see the boys are now talking to the camera, breaking the fourth wall because that's what Malcolm in the Middle did. As TV shows in the early 2000s also started doing with more characters talking direct to camera. Um, That one is interesting because it shows that Wanda and Pietro had uh, memories of their parents that they don't really talk about. Pietro brings up a uh, old time when they were going trick or treating and Wanda says, I don't remember it like that. And when they do the flashback, they are by two actors that don't even look like them one of the best parts of the episode is that because it's halloween episode everyone dresses up in a halloween costume and paul bettany dresses up as a version of vision from the actual comic books in the exact same uh color scheme with the lime green skin with the beet red face with the yellow trunks um wanda dresses up identically to her comic book counterpart with the impractical um, bikini suit that she has on with the cape with the uh, Scarlet Witch crown Um, Elizabeth Olsen really shines in this episode as she has in the whole series if I haven't said it already she's the best part I think of this entire series because she has so much to do as an actor Um, I'll get into more of that after the finale when I give my whole season review but um, this show is incredibly well directed extremely well written and unbelievably well acted. Um, it is one of my favorite Marvel products that we've had so far in general and counting the movies. Um, in this episode, you do find out that Westview has a lot more people than what we've seen. As Vision starts going around the town, he ventures to the, um, the, uh, the, the border of the actual town and finds out that there are people who are being controlled by Wanda as everybody is but they're almost on autopilot and it resembles almost a a npc in a video game just glitching out he finds a woman that's just doing the same repeated motion uh she's supposed to be hanging up um a jack-o'-lantern and she just keeps making the same motion you can even see a tear falling down her eye because she has no control over her actual actions um you've actually seen now that the uh she or sword agents are intent, um, intent to actually find out what's going on. Um, they've actually sent a drone in there and it's actually been changed to a small helicopter. So we're now finding out that things that go into the hex are being changed to fit whatever, whatever aesthetic um, the episode of the week is. Um, the actual commercial from this episode is the darkest one we've seen so far it is a claymation ad. Uh, very reminiscent of 90s uh, toy and cereal commercials. You have a little boy on a a desert island and you have a talking shark. He throws him a thing of uh, yogurt, not gogurt, but yogurt. 
and as the kid's trying to open it, he can't. And in the background, you see days turn to night, turn to day, turn to night. Um, and he basically dies and becomes a skeleton before he can ever open it. Uh, it's very dark. Um, it, it was pretty much uh, uh, a complete tonal shift. So this, this episode ends when you find out that uh, Darcy and uh, Vision uh, sent Vision an email and he was actually able to receive it earlier. He's now starting to put together that Wanda is not telling him something and that there's more going on in this world than what he even knows. So the biggest part of this episode is the finale where Vision finds the border and actually starts to go through it. As he goes through the border and gets to the other side of the hex, his body starts to disintegrate and get torn apart. Tommy um, actually shows that his powers are similar to his mother with telekinesis and he can feel his father dying. Wanda then expands the hex, which then takes over the entire shield head, um, sword headquarters that was uh, set up there and turns everybody into something that fits the aesthetic. So the sword base turns into a circus. The agents turn into clowns and strongmen. Darcy is uh, in there. Uh, Jimmy Woo and Monica just escaped the expanding hex, uh, but it was actually a five mile radius that they said originally. Now it is unknown how far this is uh, gone. It's probably close to double of what it was before. So Wanda is engulfing even more people into this fake world. Next, we are on episode seven, which is called Breaking the Fourth Wall. One of my favorite titles. This episode's intro is a complete um, homage to The Office and other early and mid 90s sitcoms, uh, mid 2000s sitcoms, where you would see a lot of uh, fourth wall breaking and a lot of um, handheld camera angles. Wanda even talks directly to the camera, so it's very reminiscent of The Office, Parks and Recreation, and uh, heavily influenced by Modern Family. Wanda wakes up in bed, not remembering what she did the night previous, which was expanding the hex, and she's still in her Scarlet Witch uh, appropriate Halloween costume. Uh, she starts giving uh, actual uh, talking head interviews. Uh, Darcy and Vision uh, meet each other, and then Vision attempts to get back home. He finds out that Wanda's actually putting up blocks every time he's trying to get home. Something's happening to uh, slow him down. So if him and Darcy are in a uh, are in a truck, the light won't change. If they get ready to drive past the red light, then a school of children come along. If they try to wait out the school of children, then construction workers come along. Um, you're starting to see more and more that Wanda is losing her grip over what's going on in her reality. The actual commercial for this episode has to, it's uh, more of a mid 2000s uh, clinical ad, like for any type of medicine that half the commercial is talking about the side effects of it. And it has to do with uh, Nexus depression medicine. To take you behind the uh, comics, Wanda is referred to as a Nexus individual in Marvel comics, meaning no matter what reality you're in or dimension you're in wanda is a constant so no matter where you are there is a wanda maximoff with those powers in that universe she is a constant there's only a few individuals like that in the uh, marvel comics wanda is one of them um finding out that wanda is losing her grip you're starting to see that things that were making sense weren't making sense to her um, things are changing and glitching without her doing them or knowing what's going on. It all leads in culmination to one of the best character reveals I've seen in a very long time. Um, I haven't made too many mentions to Agnes, the nosy neighbor played amazingly by Katherine Hahn, as she's kind of been in the background of a few episodes. Um, in the fourth episode, she's the one that typed Vision off saying that Geraldine... Monica wasn't from here and she's had a couple lines in each episode it comes to find out it was Agatha all along
So you come to find out that Agnes is actually Agatha Harkness. The person we've all been suspect, uh, speculating that she has been since the uh, first episode uh, to take you on a brief bio of Agatha Harkness. She is a character from Marvel Comics who is a witch who was the babysitter of Billy and Tommy in the comics for Wanda and Vision. She's a uh, witch that dates all the way back to the Salem Witch Trials. Agatha's reveal is absolutely amazing. Um, Wanda's noticing that the boys are missing as they went over to Agnes's house. Wanda goes over there and starts looking for them, goes down to the basement, and that's where Agnes reveals who she is. But the reveal is absolutely well done because they start with her coming in and it changes over to the black and white 19s aesthetic and shows that she knew everything that was going on and that she was a part of everything that was going wrong. Um, in the previous episode, when the boys turned 10 years old, they asked for a dog. The dog dies. She admits that she's the one that killed the dog. In the second episode at the talent show, when things start going wrong, that was Agatha in the background. Uh, she's the one that actually put uh, one of the neighbors uh, up to making Vision think that Geraldine was somebody suspicious before she chimed in. So all the little things in the background, it was Agatha all along. It is an amazing theme song that they gave her, which I think we should, should we should adopt that for a new Halloween song because it was absolutely amazing in a very Munsters 60s aesthetic style, extremely entertaining. Uh, I can't say more about how fun it was to have her revealed as the possible villain of everything so far. And just the way they did the reveal is absolutely amazing and hilarious. Also come to find out she's the reason that fake Pietro is actually here. She conjured him up. So the best part about that episode, hands down, is the Agatha all along reveal and theme song. And we're now at the penultimate episode of WandaVision, episode eight, previously on. One Easter egg that um, got pointed out now up to episode eight. After episode three, every episode Wanda herself would say previously on WandaVision. But if you actually listen to each intro, her voice gets more depressing each time. Starts out previously on WandaVision. By the time we get to episode eight, previously on WandaVision. So it's something that I didn't actually notice until it was pointed out. And then it just hit me that it's just part of the great Easter eggs that they're writing here and part of the great direction. So we find out the beginning of this episode takes place in uh, 1693 in the Salem Witch Trials. And it shows Agatha's origin, pretty much. They did de-age Catherine Hahn, which I don't even know if you needed to. I mean, she's in her mid late late 40s, but she still looks pretty young, in my opinion. But you can kind of clearly tell they did some of that uh, de-aging uh, technology on her, as they have done with uh, other actors in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, it's better than Michael Douglas's de-aging. Better than Michelle Pfeiffer's not as great as kurt russell's i'll say that kurt russell's uh de-aging in guardians of the galaxy volume two that was some good de-aging uh but you find out she is part of she is a witch she is part of a coven um the coven tried to kill her because she's accused of practicing dark magic her mother is one of the people that are trying is trying to kill her and you find out that agatha is actually more powerful than all of them and starts draining their life force out of them when they attack her, uh, killing all the other witches and eventually killing her own mother and taking her life force from her. Um, up to now, you've seen that Monica is trying to get back into the actual hex to find out what's going on and try to help Wanda. In the previous episodes, the reason that Wanda expanded the uh, uh, hex was that she was upset that they were trying to come in and take um, take vision from her. You find out that Monica is actually getting transmutated because she's now been in the hex uh, twice. So she's actually now going in for a third time and is amazing sequence that happens because she starts to basically get her superpowers and her superhero origin. 
Um, Monica in the comic books is a character known as Photon and Spectrum. Her powers are that she's able, one of the, her abilities is she's able to see everything on the electrom, uh, electromagnetic spectrum. So she can see X rays, micro rays, gamma rays, everything. She can see that. And part of her power is that she can absorb energy and disperse it. Um, her energy has been portrayed so far after she gets through the hex as blue. Wanda's has been always portrayed as red, and we've actually seen Agnes's portrayed as purple. The uh, boys, Billy and Tommy, have uh, powers themselves. Uh, Tommy, and I'm probably getting these kids mixed up. Tommy has uh, his uncle, pa uncle's powers of super speed, and Billy has his mother's powers of telekinesis and sort of telekinetics, um, which has actually led to him being... Uh, dressing up more like his mother in the red motif and Tommy actually dresses up more like his uncle with uh, light blues. Uh, this episode actually takes you through Wanda's backstory which we've never actually fully been explained. Um, her origins were that from what we saw were in Age of Ultron and it was just said that her and her brother Pietro volunteered to Hydra and then they got their powers. Well this episode actually takes you all the way back to when she was a child and shows that her, her father, her mother, and her brother living in Sokovia were under a war-torn um, monarchy and they just wanted to have nice family times and just try to forget the people were warring outside of their own doors. Um, her father comes home and you see him open up a suitcase with a bunch of VHS or a bunch of DVDs and they're actually all the sitcoms that we've seen so far. So there's an episode of Malcolm in the Middle uh, DVD. There is a Bewitched DVD, a Dick Van Dyke show DVD. So let's, you know, these are the only things that um, Wanda was able to watch as a child, which is why we've seen these different sitcoms portrayed on the show so far. Um, this is all part of Agnes's plan to find out how Wanda is able to control everybody in the hex and how she's able to do it. So she's taking her almost uh, Christmas story style through different doors to see different parts of her history and her backstory through her own mind. Um, as the family, Wanda, Pietro, her mother and her father are watching an episode of The Dick Van Dyke Show, which the first episode is heavily based on, uh, you see a missile come through the door and explode, uh, when, uh, come through the door and knock over a lot of parts of their apartment, killing her father and her mother and only Pietro and Wanda are there, and it's a Stark Industries missile, which is what we heard. Age of Ultron, she did say that the uh, missile was there for two days and they waited to die. Well, the missile's there and the blinking of it is actually reminiscent of the toaster from the commercial that we saw in episode one. So that's how that played into it. Well, come to find out, Wanda actually has uh, powers and has had them this whole time Agnes says you put a probability hex on that missile that's why it never blew up so it wasn't the faulty Stark Industries merchandise it was the fact that Wanda had powers as a child and didn't know it the next part of the episode takes place where you see Wanda volunteering to become part of the uh, a hydro program to use the uh, mind stone on her and you see that actually as she's approaching the mind stone in a lab the mind stone then comes to her it busts open from the scepter that was in that you originally saw in the avengers film uh, that loki had and that she's actually seen the actual mind stone that was inside of it the whole time which we didn't even find out until age of ultron and she sees the actual yellow stone of it and it actually shows her a glimpse of her possible future which is her in her comic accurate scarlet witch costume uh the next part actually shows that she's had her powers and that nobody else saw that when you look at the actual footage of her in the lab it just blinks just like we've seen the episodes before that when wanda wants to control something it just skips the next part of the episode shows that she's actually uh, part of the Avengers now. It takes place probably right before Civil War because she's actually in the Avengers compound where we'll see her later on in the movie. And her and Vision 
actually shows the, how they actually became close because you actually just go from age of ultron to civil war and they're kind of together has something to do with that and actually one of the best parts is how Catherine Hahn's character Agatha Harkness makes fun of her accent constantly going in and out which is something legitimately has been an issue with Elizabeth Olsen from her original Middle Eastern style accent in Age of Ultron to then going to uh, Infinity War and she's just speaking in her regular speaking voice um, you actually see that her and Vision were slowly starting to really develop a bond and that she's he's one of the only few people that she's actually been able to really be herself around being that she's lost everybody close to her. She watched her brother die. She watched her parents die. So she really doesn't have too many people she can actually look forward to. Well, the episode then skips and lets us see what happened after Endgame. She actually went to the sword headquarters to res um, take Vision's body to give him a proper burial. Um, Vision's will actually says that he does not want his body to be used for anything because he was designed to be a weapon. His body is still made of vibranium and he is still technically a lethal weapon. Well, you find out that um, she actually went there to get his body and the footage we were shown in the previous episode by Tyler Haywood he actually is trying to reassemble the vision to be a weapon. Wanda leaves and then she actually goes to Westview, New Jersey and goes to the house that we've been watching her and Vision interacting this whole time. Well, it's an empty plot. Come to find out Vision actually purchased it for him and Wanda to live in and that was going to be their goal before Infinity War even happened. Well, Wanda has a complete breakdown and breaks down crying and you just start seeing her energy come all the way out and that's what creates the hex turning the regular people that she saw as she was just driving through westview into the people that were in her sitcom the episode ends where agatha harkness actually realizes that wanda is an actual witch this isn't something that was just brought on by the mind stone this was something that was enhanced by the mind stone um, the episode ends with uh, Monica finding uh, uh, Wanda finding out that Agatha is uh, a witch and that she's actually holding her boys captive. And then we get the biggest call up that we've ever had so far. Agatha says, Wanda, you're the Scarlet Witch. Which is actually the first time we've ever heard her refer to that. We've all called her the Scarlet Witch. She's never once been called Scarlet Witch since she's been introduced. She's just been called Wanda Maximoff. So as of right now, that's where we've left. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a throwdown between Agatha Harkness and uh, Wanda. We also have Monica there who has now uh, gotten powers. She's able to withstand some of Wanda's energy that she threw at her earlier. Even the superhero landing, which was pretty cool so as of right now that's where we are so uh the next time you're gonna see me i'm gonna give you my uh reaction on episode nine the finale what i thought about it and where i think we're gonna go next with the characters so kyle what happened after i stopped this <laughs> holy hell that was a hell of a finale that was that was nuts like forced me to shape my beard up and get a shape up for goodness sake anyway yeah so we've now seen episode nine of wandavision yeah that's a series finale you went out on a high note you did better than game of thrones anyway so what we saw in this episode, we saw not actually a wrap up of every storyline. Um, I'll get to that in a second. There were some threads that were introduced that were kind of left unfurled and some that kind of had some disappointing uh, resolutions. Um, just to start it off in the episode, you did see Agatha Harkness and Wanda have a full on magic battle. Um, throughout the battle, you started seeing that Wanda's hands were kind of starting to turn dark, almost stone-like, uh, basically insinuating that Agatha was stealing Wanda's life force, how you saw in the previous episode, when you went and saw Agatha's backstory, 
uh, when she was on the Salem witch trials, when she was being tried by her other witches, including her mother, she stole their life force and stole their magic, which is a big thing in the MCU as the Doctor Strange movie introduced the concept of stealing magic from other magic holders with the end credit scene with uh, Baron Mordo. So you did see that. They actually had a good Easter egg for the Wizard of Oz. Wanda throws her car at Agatha Harkness as she um, falls into a house. And when Wanda goes to look at her, all you see are her boots. You did see the uh, resolution uh, from the cliffhanger from the previous episode of the new Android Vision. Uh, There's all white. He is a copy of Vision with actual Vision's body. The vision inside the hex uh, and him actually do meet up and have a battle. It is kind of typical MCU fare with just lasers and just going all over the place, but it was entertaining how they did actually end their battle, where basically vision gives him a question that he can't answer. Vision then imbues him with his memories. So, with the absence of the actual Mind Stone, we actually now have vision back because the new android vision now has all of the previous visions memories because part of that vision that we saw that was created by wanda in the hex does still have part of the mind stone in him because the mind stone is still part of the reality stone which is what gave uh wanda part of her power and all the infinity stones are entwined with each other so he does have all of the original visions memories up to when thanos kills him so we now have that in the mcu he after their battle he flies off and you do not hear or see about him for the rest of the episode so there is now another vision out there that is probably going through an identity crisis and I don't believe they resolved it where the vision, we'll just say prime vision that we've been seeing, didn't tell Wanda that. So that can actually be something that they pick up in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness or just something they pick up in another MCU show or film going on. We only have to see Darcy in one scene. Uh, Tyler Haywood does make his way into the hex and in an incredibly just stupid cartoon villain move tries to kill Billy and Tommy. He shoots his gun at them and Monica stops the bullets um, debuting her powers to where she was able to completely stop the bullets and let them pass through her almost kind of phasing similar to how Vision does but only this stopped the bullets. One of the bullets did actually make it past her and Billy actually used his telekinetic powers and stopped it. Then as Tyler Haywood tried to get away, uh, Darcy rams into him in her car and makes fun of the fact that he's about to get arrested. You did see that Jimmy Woo actually called the FBI in and they actually did arrest him and they came actually almost as a cavalry. So S.W.O.R.D. pretty much got frozen in place when Wanda actually let more of her power out and tried to let the people that were there go. Agatha Harkness started lifting uh, Wanda's hex magic that was over everybody and started letting them come and be who they really were and all of them came up begging to be let go, begging to know what happened to their family because they've been in there for probably a few days, a week or so, but it felt probably longer because they couldn't control any of their bodies, only their own thoughts, which they couldn't express. And then some of them even begged, like, just kill us. Like, we'd rather be dead than have to go through this, which really does set up the fact that Wanda tortured an entire town of people. And there's no resolution to that. At the absolute end of the episode, There is no resolution to that. And to these people, she is a monster. She is somebody that took them against their will and tortured them pretty much. Also in the episode, you did see that Monica and uh, Wanda did come to a resolution. And I was actually a little disappointed that Monica didn't use any of her powers in any other way. I mean, she did save Billy and Tommy, but there was no battle with her and Wanda which was actually kind of set up uh, two episodes previous 
you did see that Wanda going through her battle with Agatha Harkness as she was getting weaker was starting to think on her feet battling kind of for the first time and she actually runs up to Agatha behind her exactly almost shot for shot as she did in her first ever appearance in the MCU when she came up behind Tony Stark Iron Man in Age of Ultron did her little finger wavy thing and then kind of went into her mind and inceptioned her um, she took her back to when uh, she was going to be almost burned at the stake at her witch trial and it was shot in a way to make you think that Wanda had the upper hand but this whole time Agatha she knew all along I make that joke no no I'm not making that joke but yeah, Agatha was actually in charge of it. And then she kind of turns it back on Wanda. You actually really got to feel for Wanda because she was losing her powers and couldn't do anything to stop that. And everything that was going on around her, she really started breaking down even more. Um, she did open the hex to let all the people out, but that's when S.W.O.R.D. came in. And she really was starting to lose her grip on reality as when she was starting to lose her powers vision billy and tommy started to disintegrate uh if you've seen the episode you saw earlier um the season where vision got outside of the hex how he was being torn apart they did the exact same thing again this was actually very beautifully done with the way they did it because it was straight up out the comic books if you know the comics you know wanda's children and how wanda just went crazy and starts disintegrating it was shot for shot just like the comic book panel which that was pretty cool so you saw that wanda was really gonna have to actually either give in and let agatha win or she was gonna have to do something she had never done which was try to control her magic she's never really been under control i mean if you look at civil war the one time she tried to be in control and was out in the field she killed innocent people so they have their big battle up in the sky and then Wanda reveals that she's placed runes on all the sides of the hexagon and if you watch the previous episode Agatha let her know that if you're in a space and there are runes only person that casts the runes can use their magic in there making it so Agatha now has absolutely no power within the hex you did see that at the end of it Wanda comes to her full form she comes to the full Scarlet Witch in the comic accurate costume updated. The crown looked beautiful. Elizabeth Olsen's hair was even redder. She now fully has her accent back. Her accent is 100% here again. She is all Sorcerer Supreme-ish. Um, Agatha does actually lament that because Wanda has now fully uh, embraced her power she's unleashed something that she can't even hope to contain and to quote agatha you're gonna need my help uh, agatha did say that in the dark hold the book that we did see uh, in the uh, previous episode that was speculated that's what it was if you're uh, for, if you're a viewer of uh agents of shield you've seen this book because that was the book ghost rider was after uh, Gabriel Luna, the actor that played Ghost Rider, even tweeted out making a joke. Hey guys, sorry, I lost the Darkhold, which is really cool. I hope they do bring him back as Ghost Rider. But uh, you did see that Wanda actually was referred to as the Scarlet Witch in that book, which is actually a term similar to the Ancient One or the Sorcerer Supreme in the world of magic in the MCU. That book has a lot of power in it that can be used for dark for dark magic, which uh, Agatha kind of lamented that that's what that book has. And the fact that Wanda uses chaos magic, which is a darker form of magic. So Agatha's penance for everything she did, Wanda turned her back into the 1950s version of herself, nosy neighbor, and basically trapped her in her own personal hex. On the outside, she's just talking like she's in the 50s, looks like she's in the 50s with a garb, makeup, but inside she's unable to control herself, which is almost a fate worse than death. At the end of the episode, you uh, saw Wanda, Vision, and the boys go back home as Wanda starts taking the hex down and everything turning back to normal. 
they tuck the boys in, tell them how much they love them, their family is forever, which they said a few times in the episode, which I think is setting something up, the fact that she and Vision kept saying family is forever. The most emotional beat of the episode, which we kind of knew was coming, was Wanda and Vision saying goodbye to each other again. Um, Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany, uh, I, I can't say uh, I can't say enough how play, pleased I was as a viewer to be rewarded with seeing this because we really didn't get this type of closure at any other MCU couple. Um, we haven't had too many deaths in the MCU, but when they have happened, they've been handled with you know the grandeur they they merit. But these are characters we've seen for a while, especially for me, as Iron Man is in my top five favorite films. Seeing Jarvis go to Vision, and now seeing him gone again is extremely emotional emotional more emotional i would say than what happened in infinity war they did a great job in infinity war but this one we knew what it was leading up to so vision disappears everything goes back to where uh, the way it was before wanda uh, let out the hex wanda walks through the town all the townspeople like i said earlier are still scared of her um she's a pariah she's a terrorist um, and then she flies off after Monica says, uh, don't worry, nobody's going to come after you. Then we get two after credit scenes. We get a mid credit scene and we get a, a actual after the credit scene. And in the first mid uh, credit scene, it takes up with Monica uh, kind of. Uh, helping out with the aftermath of what happened jimmy Wu makes his last appearance and actually is kind of assertive monica even makes a comment that authority looks pretty good on jimmy uh they also mentioned how darcy didn't stick around because she didn't want to be debriefed uh, agent comes up to monica and tells her they uh, need to talk to her and to the in the theater she walks in and the agent that actually let her in there turns out to be a scroll so we did get that right you did get to see that uh, Monica was not phased by it. So this is probably not her first time uh, since she's been a grown up dealing with a scroll. The scroll says uh, he needs to speak to you. Uh, old friend of your mom, uh, old friend, uh, old friend of your mom's. And she's like, who? And she gives her a look. She's like, where? And she points up. This will most likely directly lead into Captain Marvel 2, which Tiana Paris, Monica Rambeau has been confirmed to be a member, a cast member of and I can't wait to see the film. I was not a huge fan of uh, the first Captain Marvel film. I am a fan of Tiana Paris, a fan of this character of Monica Rambeau. So I cannot wait to see what they do with her character with Brie Larson's character. And through the season, you did see that there's a little animosity through Monica and Carol. Um, I'm assuming because Carol's just been gone for 30 years and hasn't shown up really to help out. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that dynamic is done in Captain Marvel 2. And in the last scene of the series, uh, we go, we start uh, panning in a mountain range, uh, right off a lake, there's a cabin, just keep zooming in and you see it's uh, Wanda. She's in her sweats, she goes in the house to have some tea, camera keeps panning in, goes into the bedroom and it's, there that we find out that she's astral projecting herself to look like the version we just saw in the bedroom she's surrounded by chaos magic in her full scarlet witch attire going through the dark hold learning the dark magic now then you start to hear voices and you hear billy and tommy start screaming mom help us she looks up at the camera her eyes are red just like it are in the comics and then it goes off I do think this is going to set up her to be an antagonist in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I think you've set up so much in this series that will lead into Doctor Strange's film that I don't see how this would lead her to be as a sidekick or a co-hero in this. I think Wanda is going to go full off the range even more and I think she is going to be a full-fledged uh, antagonist in this film. Now, as great as this episode was, and it was great, there are some things that I don't think that a lot of people are going to agree with. One of them is that we did find out that fake Pietro 
uh, played by Evan Peters, who played Quicksilver in the Fox X-Men uh, film universe. He was nobody, literally. He was an actor, and I'm not making this up, named Ralph. So he was the Ralph that Agatha, Agnes, would have been talking about the entire series. It's him. He's the Ralph. His last name's Boner. And they play it for all the childish comedic merit that it deserves and find out that he's just an actor just an actor that happened to live in westview agnes agatha actually put a uh, spell around him with a uh, choker a choker necklace monica sees that because she can see the entire spectrum so she can see the magic takes it off of him and he reverts back to being ralph boner instead of fietro fake pietro his powers leave him also so his powers just so happened to be exactly like Pietro's. And the fact that he was just Evan Peters to us is just that he was Evan Peters. He was just cast because it was a cute casting choice to pick a guy that played the same character in another universe, play him in here. The X-Men are not in this universe still. Just deal with it. The other part, a lot of people are probably not gonna agree with is that we didn't get to see any Fantastic Four members. We didn't get to see Reed, Doctor Doom. We didn't get to see Blue Marvel, Adam Bashir. When uh, Monica made that comment episodes, uh, by almost by the midway point, that she had a guy that was an uh, astrophysicist that was gonna be helping her out. When we found out in that episode, uh, a couple episodes later, that it was just a friend of hers, somebody we'd never heard of, that just turned out to be that. The fact that they teed it up a couple times, led to a lot of speculation i did think that it was it was going to be cool if it was blue marvel adam bashir to introduce that character into the mcu a lot of people wanted to be dr doom just uh an easter egg or something it was nothing i don't get why they teed it up like that because when you see something in a tv show like that where i got a guy that's gonna help me like any other time that's been on even in the mcu they had that at the end of Ant-Man, when they had the scene for Civil War where Sam says to Cap, I know a guy. We know he's talking about Ant-Man. This was just a person that Monica knew. The other thing that I think a lot of people are going to have an issue with is the fact that we never found out who Jimmy's um, witness was. Jimmy's whole reason for being there, Jimmy Woo's whole e reason for being there is that he was in witness protection. He was had a witness protection witness that had gotten lost in the town. We never got any resolution of who that was. Um, I kind of wanted that to be Wonder Man, which plays right into um, the whole Scarlet Witch and Vision thing in the comics. Long story short, Wanda Man was Wanda's original love. His brain waves were then transported into Vision, which is why Wanda and Vision are in love in the comic book, because he has the brain algorithms of the man that she knew and loved. Just turned out to be a red herring that they didn't even wind up saying who it was. So the series didn't end perfectly. Nothing ends perfectly. Um, so those are a couple of things I've seen a lot of people already say that they had issues with which i can't really be mad at i do think that one of the reasons this series might not be incredibly well received is internet speculation since the first episode everybody has been speculating trying to jump ahead of the storytelling trying to figure out what's going to happen and when the weekly schedule of this lines up and it's not that they then okay what's gonna happen next week or what's gonna happen next week i enjoy everything about this show i just think that you should enjoy what they gave us and not try to bring it down by the writing that you wanted like mephisto everybody knew mephisto was the real person that was behind this he was ralph he was the the bunny that agnes had he is the reason that the boys are there it's mephisto 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 he's the one that's inside the dark hole when you open the book he'll come out they never even said his name in here as far as we know mephisto still does not exist in the mcu 
So it's just one of those things where, yes, just because you know what they're possibly doing from where they have taken from the comics, if they don't do it, that's not bad. We got a version of House of M and a version of the Vision comic book live action with two big actors with a huge big budget that was extremely well made my final thoughts on this series i had a lot of fun with it i had a lot of fun with it i had a lot of fun with this series and over a few mcu film products that we've had if i'm ranking this versus the other 20 what 22 or 23 films it's in the top 20. <laughs> I like this more than I like Thor the Dark World. I like this more than I like Guardians 2. I like this more than Captain Marvel. So it, it's it's in the top 20 uh, for me so far. Uh, Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany have great chemistry. I'm glad to see the continuation of that story with these characters because not everybody can get their time in a film because there's always setting up something else for another movie. I love the fact that we are getting these Disney Plus series where you can actually take characters that haven't had a lot of screen time and that we still didn't know too much about. Wanda, for instance, we really didn't know too much about her after Age of Ultron. She was almost used as a plot device in Civil War and she was barely in Endgame and had a minor role in Infinity War. So this is good to really see more of this version of the character because remember just because these are comic book characters these aren't straight from the page the first time we've ever heard her referred to as the scarlet witch was in the second to last episode of this show she's just been wanda maximoff we call her scarlet witch because we know who that is but in this world she's just been called the scarlet witch which is a title actually uh, I really enjoyed Tiana Paris. I will follow any products, uh, projects I see of hers. She really wowed me with this. I love this character of Monica Rambeau. The acting that she brought to it, the gravitas in the first uh, scene of episode four is still resonating to me right now. I really enjoyed seeing Randall Park as Jimmy Woo, a minor character from uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. I would actually like to see him kind of fit into the role of the new Coulson somebody that just jumps around in this world that can almost be an audience surrogate because him and Darcy for the majority of the uh, first couple episodes were theorizing and saying everything we were saying wondering what we were wondering so that would be cool Kat Dennings really shined in this I she really didn't get too much to do in the Thor movies besides being the comic relief which wasn't really that funny to me I like this uh, role of her. The fact they did give her more to do. I like that this did build up the world of the MCU a little more still with dealing with people that were still here during the five years of Thanos' snap. It did introduce a lot of things that I think they are going to start taking and building off of in the MCU. And if rumors are true, it is because of this movie, we will see influence even in the next Spider-Man film. So who knows? But what do you think? How did you like the finale of WandaVision? And in total, what did you think of the entire series? Were you into the first two episodes that were in black and white like me? Did you enjoy the ride? Did you heavily theorize and watch all these other theorized videos on YouTube and just get disappointed? Did you want to see Reed Richards be that uh, astrophysicist buddy of Monica? What do you want to see in the next MCU series, which is going to be Falcon and the Winter Soldier? I will be covering that. So leave all that in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button, download the podcast, share the podcast, and don't forget to rate the podcast. I've been Chaos. You've been awesome. Nerd responsibly. <laughs>